I am here with your joys of Christmas story. And tonight, I'm going to be reading you the birth of Jesus story. These are some uh, little um, quotes by people who just sent in some quotes to the book that I want to read before I get into the Christmas story. This one is by Karen Eman. She's an author. She says, If you want to bring yourself joy, then seek to give to others. And this one is by Stephen King. It's Merry Christmas at our house. Whatever it is at yours, have a happy one and be good to somebody. Amen. I really, really love that. That's so true. And it's Merry Christmas at our house as well. Always has been, always will be. This one's by Nora Roberts, a novelist. Nothing ever seems too bad, too hard, or too sad when you have got a Christmas tree in the living room. We didn't put a tree up this year. This wasn't in the universe spirit, really. This one is by um, Susie Eller. She's an author, a speaker, and a podcaster. Jesus exchanges our hurts for joy. This one is by Dolly Parton. No matter what, I always make it home for Christmas. And sometimes I even dress up like Santa Claus. This one is by Alicia, who is a writer and a speaker. The good news of great joy exchanged the course of every silent night to come. This one is by Bobby Robertson from the song Christmas Must Be Tonight. In a dream, I heard a voice say, Fear not, come rejoice. It's the end of the beginning. Praise the newborn king. And this one is from Carrie Underwood's five-year-old son, Isaiah, dressing up in his church clothes to record on his mom's 2020 Christmas album, My Kid. I'm going to go sing for Jesus, so I want it to look nice. I loved her. I didn't know she had a son, but it sounds like she's raising him very well. You cannot raise a child no better than to raise him to love Jesus. And the last one is by Max, Max Lucado, and it says, Christmas is best pondered not with logic, but with imagination. All right, so now we can get into the Christmas story. And I got some beautiful pictures that go along with it, guys. The Christmas story, gather round for our read-along feature. The illustrations are by Stefano Vitali. Vitali's folk art style was inspired by his travels to Mexico and the American Southwest while he lived in the United States. He now lives in Venice, Italy. So I'll show you the first picture before I read it. Sure. That's an angel coming to Mary. Gabriel coming to Mary. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth a city in Galilee to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. 
to find that in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 31. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared, wait, let's skip the page, sorry about that. Here's, here's another page. Angels on the field to the wise men. You just are sticking together. After, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east, and we have come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, and search carefully for the child. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, 7 through 8. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. Look. I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn babe wrapped in swallowing clothes and lying in a manger. Luke 2, 8-12. Luke 2, 8 through 12. There's pictures. days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax list. Since Joseph belonged to David's house, the family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen everything happen just as they had been told. And that is actually where it ends. And there's the pictures. Because it was just telling about Jesus' birth. It doesn't go more about the whole story of Jesus growing up and everything. It's told about the birth. And you see the beautiful pictures I wanted to share with you guys. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Amen. In just a short time, it'll be Christmas Day. And our Savior will have been born many, many, many years ago. We will celebrate His birth. Happy birthday, Jesus. Many people will be awake getting gifts having parties and so forth. And I hope that they all remember, which I know a lot of them don't celebrate Jesus or even believe in Jesus or care. 
but I hope they celebrate what tomorrow is really all about, which is Jesus' birth, and they teach their children what tomorrow is all about. Not about the presents, but about the Lord. Of course, it's always nice, you know, kids to get gifts, but they still need to know what the real reason is for Christmas. I want to read you guys this before we end tonight. This is by Margie Reese Seacomb from Massachusetts. The night an angel brought his wings. After a long battle with Parkinson's disease, my husband Bob passed away very early one morning at the hospice care facility where he'd been a patient. I was heartbroken at losing my best friend and partner of 35 years. Bob had suffered so much, especially in the last three months. I wish I could know for sure he was at peace in heaven. At least I would have that comfort. I called everyone in our big family, all of them far away. My brother Joe and his wife lived closest eight hours from me. We'll get right in the car, Joe said, so you won't be alone tonight. I was grateful for their company. Joe and my sister-in-law turned in early after their long drive, and I lay in bed. Although I'd known Bob was going to die, I wasn't prepared for all the questions racing through my mind. Where was Bob now? Was he hurting? Was he thinking of me? The next morning, I got up to find Joe, stalking through the house, a puzzled look on his face. He walked from room to room, opening cupboards, picking things up and putting them down. He inspected a tabletop clock, held it to his ear. Joe, what are you doing, I asked. I distinctly heard a ringing last night, he said. I got up and took a look around, but I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. Still can't. Maybe you were dreaming, I said. I didn't have an alarm system, and the appliances were quiet. But Joe kept up his search until we had to leave to meet for the funeral director. When Joe and I got home, I walked in through the dining room. Something on the shelf caught my eye. A little ornament a bell in the shape of an angel. A friend had given it to Bob and me for Christmas one year, and Bob liked it so much, we'd never packed it away with the rest of our other holiday decorations. Whenever Bob passed through the dining room, he would pick up the ornament and give it a jingle. When a bell rings, an angel gets his wings, he quote from It's a Wonderful Life. Bob's habit never got old, but I hadn't thought of it since we moved to Auspice. There was no way that angel ornament could have sounded on its own. I picked it up and rang it. My brother spun around, his eyes wide with wonder. That's it! That's what I heard! When I showed Joe the angel and told him his story, he smiled. Mystery solved, he said. Bob got his wings. It was her husband letting her know he was in heaven and he's got his wings. Not to worry, he's okay. What was? Bell couldn't ring itself. Wanted to let her know he was okay. So I wanted you guys to hear that story. In case you're missing a loved one. It's Christmas. I'm sorry if you are, because a lot of people are. We are missing loved ones this Christmas as well. And we've also got bad news. Um, in our family as well. My mom got bad news just a week ago, if that long ago. She'll be fighting a very hard, rough, hell battle. 
I ask you guys to keep my mom and mom to Christ in your prayers. She'll be going through a hard battle. So it's not very good news. This has been a very bad year. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. And God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow on Christmas. And I hope you guys have a great time with your family and you get to spend it with someone you love. And if not, remember, Jesus is there with you. And he's the reason why there is a Christmas. And you're never alone. He's there with you always. And he's the best friend to have. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.